I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. We are in Exodus chapter 25, looking at the directions that God gives for the tabernacle and for the furniture of the tabernacle. And we have already noticed uh, what he has said about this Ark of the Covenant. And uh, now we've been looking at the mercy seat in verses 17 through 22. We began looking at these verses yesterday. I want to read these verses today and then conclude um, our study on what God says about these directions regarding the mercy seat. So it says in Exodus 25, 17, And thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold, of beaten work shalt thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat. And make one cherub on the one end, and the other cherub on the other end, even of the mercy seat shall ye make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubim shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings. And their faces shall look one to another, toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. So as we come into these verses, we've been looking at the directions that God gives to the children of Israel regarding the mercy seat. Yesterday, we noticed in verse 17 that the mercy seat was made of pure gold, which speaks of the absolute deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, just to remind you, in case you're not familiar with the terminology, that word deity simply means that Jesus Christ is God, that he was not just a good man. He was not just a prophet. He was the God man, the Lord Jesus Christ as it says in Second Timothy or First Timothy three sixteen, God was manifest in the flesh, and we also saw yesterday how that Christ is our mercy seat in heaven, and we saw that that word mercy seat comes from the same word that the word propitiation comes from in the New Testament, and we see there that He is a propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world, as it says in 1 John 2, 2. That does not mean that all will be saved. We do not believe in universal salvation. We believe that salvation is available to all, that Jesus Christ died for all, but that it only becomes effective for those who actually trust the Lord Jesus Christ and acknowledge their sinful condition for salvation. We also saw that he is the great high priest in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. Now we want to take some time today to look at these cherubims that overshadow the mercy seat that is talked about in verses 18 through 20. These cherubims, or angels, symbolize the justice and the judgment of God. Because God is just, sin is dealt with. And the judgment of God falls on sin. And uh, praise God that for those who have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, God's justice and God's judgment fell on the Lord Jesus Christ when he went to the cross of Calvary. And without that mercy seat there, these cherubims would have looked on the broken law that was in there. Remember Moses, they put in here Moses' the, the tables of stone that Moses broke they had the law of God on them, but because the mercy seat was there, they looked on the blood-stained mercy seat instead of looking at the broken law. And the uh, let's just notice a couple of things here as we walk through there. It says, And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold of beaten work, shalt thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat. So there he talks about two cherubims, and that word cherubim very simply is plural for cherub. And uh, so he says here, there's going to be two cherubims. Again, in verse 19, make one cherub on the one end and the other cherub on the other end. Even of the mercy seat shall you make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings. And their faces shall look one to another toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. So those cherubims are looking down at the blood that is shed upon that altar for the atonement of sin which is a reminder for us that one day the Lamb of God would shed his blood, 
But friends, not simply for an atonement. That word atonement means covering. But the Lamb of God, as we are told in John 1, 29, not simply covers sin, but that he takes away the sin of the world. Then we see here the blood-sprinkled mercy seat stood between a holy law and a sinful people. In verse 21, it says, And thou shalt put the, put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and in the ark shalt thou put the testimony that I shall give thee. So here we see that the, the mercy seat is above the ark, it sits on the top of the ark, and in the ark, he says, Thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And of course, we know as we cross-reference that, that we know that what actually get in there were the two tables of stone that had the law on them that Moses broke. Um, we don't have time to look at this. You can jog it down if you want to. But in Le Leviticus chapter 16, on the Day of Atonement, that one day a year that the high priest went into the holiest of all, the holy of holies, and there made a sacrifice for the blood for the for the people. In Leviticus 16, it tells us that on that day of atonement, that the blood was sprinkled for all the people. And that blood made an atonement and made a covering for their sin until the Lord Jesus Christ came, who would completely deal with sin once and for all. And uh, so that happened every single year on the day of atonement. And we do not even want to begin to think how many animals have been sacrificed for the atonement of the people and things of that nature. But friends, we do not need to do that today. The Bible makes it very clear that the Lord Jesus Christ was the Lamb of God and that he died for our sins. And the Bible is also very clear, friends, that he died once for our sins. He will not die again. It does not need to be repeated ever again. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was shed upon the cross of Calvary is sufficient um, for sins once and for all. Let me give you a couple of verses out of Hebrews. We're going to be going a lot to Hebrews in this study because Hebrews is kind of the New Testament equivalent to the things that we find here in the New Testament. And in the book of Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews, whom I believe to be the Apostle Paul, um, describes for us how that Christ is the fulfillment of these things. And in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 11, it says, But Christ, being come a high priest of great th good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. So he's telling us there that the Lord Jesus Christ is a, the tabernacle is a picture of him, and the furniture of a tabernacle is a picture of Christ, but yet Christ is superior to all those things. Why get caught up in the type when now we have the real thing? And sadly, there are some even today that are following these things in types when Christ fulfilled those things. It says in Hebrews 10 and in verse 14, it says, For by one offering he, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. I actually love these verses. Come back with me, if you would, to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 10. It says, By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. There were many pieces of furniture in the tabernacle, but one of the things we're not going to find in there as we study through these, the furniture of the tabernacle is a chair. There was no chair there because the work of the high priest was never done. It says in verse 11, he standeth daily ministering and off, offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. But verse 12, but this man, the Lord Jesus Christ, after he offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. And the reason why he was able to sit down was because it was a, and it is a finished work. Friends, you can't, for those of you that are trying to add things to your salvation, let me say this, Jesus said it is finished. And you can't add anything to a finished work. Then go to the place where God met and communed with his people. It says in verse 22 of Exodus 25, And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things, which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. Friends, this communion and this fellowship was only on the basis of the blood-sprinkled mercy seat. And the exact same thing is true for us today. The only way that we can have communion with God, the only way that we can have fellowship with God is because of the blood 
of the Lord Jesus Christ that was shed for sin. If you're not depending on that for sins forgiven, for communion, for fellowship, then there and that alone, then there is no fellowship, there's no communion, and there's no forgiveness. Have a great day.